Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. Let me start by wishing those of you that celebrate Christmas a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance. Please take time and celebrate the fact that you made it this fine to 2023 with your loved into 2023, getting into 2024 with your loved ones. So Merry Christmas to you and Merry Christmas to your families from me and my family and the team at AWPS Renewable Energy. Merry Christmas to you. Um, today, I'm going to talk about uh, my experiences with the Solar X inverter. So, as you all know, in December 2021, I installed the Solar X. It was at the time 5 kilowatt inverter, two T58 batteries, which are 5.8 kilowatt hour each, and they had a nominal voltage of 110 to 120 volts each. And then I had the mid box. The mid box had um, the breakers inside, breakers for the grid so you can turn the grid it was a red switch that you could turn off or on and then it had a we used the current limiter it had an rcd device that was stripping so we replaced that with the current limiter and it seems to be common in non-european or non-american areas that they would trip so we replaced it with the current limiter it has a inverter breaker so you turn the inverter breaker off and it will not allow the grid to go into the inverter and then, so it's called the inverter grid breaker. It had a grid breaker, and that would allow the grid to come into the mid box, and then either go to the inverter or go to the contactor. And then it had a battery breaker, so you can turn the batteries on or batteries off. And then finally it had a contactor. It was actually two contactors. Uh, one was for the grid, and the other was for the inverter. If the inverter stopped supplying and the grid was available, boom! And then it will switch to the grid. If the grid, grid failed, boom, it will switch. Um, this was pretty seamless. You would just hear this clack and then it will switch. Initially, the switch was slow. It would have uh, 10 seconds of no power. A firmware update fixed it and then it was seamless. So what has it been like? The start was not, um, the, start was not the best. We had a little bit of an issue. And that issue we ran into was our on Christmas Day, the we didn't have power. Woke up with no power, which wasn't unex, which wasn't unexpected. The sun had come out. We we're expecting the batteries to start charging, and guess what? He kept saying EPS waiting, EPS waiting, EPS waiting. I'm like, ah, what's EPS waiting for now? An hour later, EPS was still waiting. I'm like, EPS, aren't you tired of waiting? Stop waiting now and do something. EPS just kept waiting. I'm like, okay, look, EPS, I'm going to slap you. Stop waiting. Do something. Anyway. EPS kept waiting, and I recognized at that point that we had a problem. I go into the menu, and PV was not supplying. There was no PV. Wow. The P, sorry, there was PV. You saw PV voltage, but there was zero watts and zero, zero amps coming from the PV. That's the best way to say it, and that was exactly what was happening. Christmas Day. So I sent a message to my Solar X deck team. Now, in China, they also celebrate Christmas. Surprising, they do celebrate Christmas. So they were out for Christmas. So it's telling me, look, you know something? Let me try and see what I can do. Can I log into your, I want to log into your system, even though I'm home, to see what's going on and see how I can help you. You all remember that I'm 100% I'm of the grid, right? Very good. My internet does not have a UPS. My inverter is my UPS. So when I didn't have internet, when I didn't have power, I did not have internet. So that was a new problem, right? How do we resolve this challenge now where this guy, in China, wants to log into my inverter and see if you either do a firmware upda update, check the settings to find out why I did not have power. So he took, he says, okay, let me get back to you. 30 minutes later, he gets back to me and goes, I've talked to my my people in Europe. So Lax has um, facilities, I know in the Netherlands for sure. I, tried, I bought inverters from them in the Netherlands. And he goes, they want to send you firmware. How can we get the firmware to you? I'm going to send it to my email. So they send me firmware to my email. Open my trusty laptop. I use the hotspot from my phone. I access it. I save the firmware on a flash drive. I take the, and then they tell me how to install it. There are two um, components you install, ARM and DSP. Don't ask me what they are, and it's not an ARM. It's just, that's what it's called, ARM, ARM and DSP. So. I stick it in, it lights up. I'm like, woo! And then 
nothing happens. He does not see. He doesn't see the firmware. So I call the guy. I go, look, I've put it in, and he does not see the firmware. So what do I do? He goes, um, how did you install it? I said, well, a bunch of other things on the flash drive, and I just put it into a folder. He goes, mm -mm -mm -mm. don't put it into the folder. It has to be the primary file, and do not in put it on the flash drive exactly as we sent it to you. So it'll be a folder, and within the folder are contained those ARM and DSP files. I do that, stick it in, it lights up again, I'm like, woo! And then it tells me, what do you want to update ARM? I say, yes. He asked me to confirm that's what I wanted to update, it does the update. Then it asked me if I wanted to update DSP, I said yes. Selects it, finishes, and I wait a few seconds, the inverter turns off, turns back on again, and it starts charging. Woo! I'm like, yo! We got it done. So Christmas turned out not to be a bust. We had power for Christmas. So that was my biggest challenge with Solar X at the beginning. They did some custom firmware for, firmware for us, and the custom firmware helped um, mitigate some issues that were unique to Nigeria. Especially for those of our customers who were on the grid. Um, they had some grid issues, uh, grid frequency variation, a bunch of really, really silly things. And those that used generators to generate grid had even more faults. And they did custom firmware to help us with that. So that was one. Um, that was my first big challenge. One thing, oh, by the way, um, as you know, I've been stuck at 4,900 subscribers for a while. I need you to help me get to 5,000. So please push that subscribe button right down there. Okay, subscribe and also don't fail to hit the notification icon so that when I post new videos, you will get notified. As you see, I don't post that many videos, so you don't want to miss out when I post the next one. So please help me out, smash that subscribe button. So, back to the experience so far. So, again, I told you I have a 5 kilowatt inverter, which is now a 7.5 kilowatt inverter. I have two batteries, 11.6 kilowatt hours, which I discharge 90% at the most. And then I have 7.2 kilowatts in solar panels on the roof. It's 10 380 watt panels and 9 400 watt panels. That's what I have. So I have two separate strings. And my string voltage is about 360, 370. That's what the string voltage is. So each string is about 360, 370. And they're independent MPPT. So you could run whatever you want on each string. Um, sorry, I'm getting dizzy with hand movement. Now, one big thing. Why did I go with a high voltage inverter as opposed to a low voltage inverter when we did the installation in Asheshe, remember the one we did at the white house we did the eight kilowatt inverters our biggest challenge were cabling when we first uh, ran the system we were excited and we started to smell cables that had gotten really hot the cables had gotten so hot we had to turn power off and then we more than double the cable. We initially started with two on each, two 70 mm cables. And by the time we were done, we had 870 mm cables on the positive, 870 mm cables on the negative. And that was just okay. Uh, we would have needed to do much more than that, but I think for the load that they were pushing at the time, that was adequate. That led us to think that we don't want to go through this stress again when we do an installation. We're pushing high current and the cables are getting hot. Your inverter is also generating a lot of heat. So how do you minimize or how do you mitigate these issues? One, cabling, which gets very expensive the more you do it and the longer you run it. And the heat on the inverters, because now it requires extra cooling. Where you get away with one AC is now you need two ACs because you're trying to cool the inverters and also your sizing to match. You're sizing to match your the current you're pushing through. So we started looking at high voltage inverters and the only manufacturer who actually talked to us and was willing to take time to explain to me why I should do a high voltage inverter was SolarX. SolarX, not only were they doing to do, willing to do that, they were also willing to offer me an exclusive for West Africa at the time. It's now West exclusive for Nigeria. If you wanted to buy a SolarX product, you had to contact me. That for me was awesome. They were insistent that anyone that was going to um, sell or install solar x product needed to know and be trained on the product for me that sold it so we um that was that was it that was the driver um good support commitment and then finally a product that i could run high um high high, high watts and not get heat 
So that was it. So I can push, I'm sorry for the so so many times, I can push 5,000 watts or 6,000 watts and 6,000 watts will represent less than 20 amps. Amazing, right? So 6,000 divided by two, by 250 volts. That, that's, that's, you know, 20 some other amps. So at 30 amps, at 30 amps, 30 amps times 240 volts is seven kilowatts. I can push seven kilowatts through the system and I'm only pushing 30 amps. At seven kilowatts on your 50 volt inverter, you're pushing some serious numbers. You're pushing uh, 200 amps. When you're pushing 200 amps now, cooling starts to be an, become an issue. Your inverters need more cooling. Uh, when you, when you, to cool them, you need bigger fans. Bigger fans are noisy. So that was one thing we had to deal with. Each time we're running some huge numbers, our day inverters would kick in and the fans were really noisy. You're eating, boom, you hear it and it's like, damn, these things are noisy. You know, you don't realize it, how noisy they are. Again, because of that high heat, they could only offer you five-year warranties because those, com those components, the components inside are subject to a lot of heat. They are heat. There is a lot of heat to them. And they cannot guarantee you that they will perform longer than five years. Uh, Solar X, don't get, they don't get that hot. They do have fans, but the fans are smaller and they're more quiet. So you don't hear, you barely hear the fans. And then finally, because it's not getting as hot, guess what? They can give you a 10 year warranty. So they give us a 10 year warranty on the inverters and on the battery. I mean, how could I go wrong with something like this? So that was it. Quiet operation, longer warranties. And I, I just couldn't go wrong. Now, we've not had a failure in this, on this facility. Of the inverters we've installed, we've had two outright failures. What is an outright failure? The inverters stopped producing energy. It wouldn't come on, it was dead. One was a customer in Anambra State who had a problem with a grid. One minute the grid would be 200 volts, 200 volts and dropped to 90, then back to 200 volts, back to 90. So yeah, they contacted us, opening and closing, opening and closing, opening and closing, a relay, sorry, that was opening and closing, and eventually that relay will fail. We'd ask the customer to not connect the grid. They promised us that they wouldn't connect the grid until they put a stabilizer in. They didn't do that. So you had it opening, closing, opening, relay, opening, closing, relay, opening, closing, and eventually fail. It really has only so many times you can open and close before it fails. So that failed. Solar X was actually shocked and surprised that it failed. They asked us to send that inverter to them in China. They wanted to do a postmortem to see what happened. And all the failures they've had came from us. So that was the first failure. We were the one. Then we had a second failure. A customer we'd installed in Benin a year before. And she one day just called out of the blue that she doesn't have power. Her daughter and her, her daughter and the boyfriend came to visit. Whatever they were doing, the system failed. And honestly, we could not figure out what happened. So we gave her a replacement inverter. So let me replace what I said. Let me repeat what I said. We gave her a replacement inverter. Let us sink in for a second. While it's thinking, please don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you like what I'm saying, give me a thumbs up. It matters to YouTube a lot. So do give me a thumbs up. So back to the warranty comment. Because that was a warranty item I told you about. Solar X does not repair. Let me say it again. Solar X does not repair. What do they do? We do a diagnostic. They log into the device. They check the device. If they realize that it's not going to come back on, guess what they do? Christopher, go into your inventory, take an inverter, send it to the customer. When we're sending your new order, we'll send you a replacement. That simple. For those of you that have done the year, you know the process, right? Lux Power, you know the process. Victron, you know the process. Schneider, you know the process. You remove the inverter, you send it to a center that's Victron and Schneider. The center does a diagnostic and then they tell you what's wrong. And if it's still under warranty, they replace the component that failed. The air does the same thing, the air will look it through. Then they will send you me the part that failed for me to put into the inverter. The first time we did it, we screwed it up, we broke the inverter. I had to buy a replacement inverter. That is not our area of expertise, touching finely two things and sticking them into... That is not my area of expertise. 
and I fail miserably at it. So I do not like those processes. The process I like is it fails, we diagnose, I give you a new inverter. Period. No questions asked. And that's how it should be. So reliability-wise, we've had two outright failures, and those were replaced under warranty. The one got sent to uh, SolarX for a post-mortem. The other one is sitting in my warehouse right now. They do the same for batteries. We had a cost. We had someone who called us. They purchased the system from SolarX a year or two before we became the distributor. They didn't do the settings properly. The batteries weren't charging 30%. They did it for a long, a while, long enough. They did it long enough. The electronics shut down because the cells had gone below what was acceptable voltage, and the batteries would not restart. Even though it was their fault, guess what? Solar X replaced it. Christopher, do you have any batteries in inventory? Yes, I do. Give it to him. We'll send the replacement. Like that's it. So that's why I like it, and that's why the experience has been good. As you all, as you all know, we did a big installation, um, 180 kilowatts using Solar X inverters, and the people have abused the crap out of the system. They go and they connect things. There was time we had 15 welding machines on the system. Um, our, EP, our EPS boxes were just firing like machine guns because the contactors were opening and closing. They were getting tripped. And guess what? The system which to the inverters did not fail. We had an um, EPS box fail because it was too small. We put a bigger one and one of them has failed. But the inverters have withstood the abuse that has been put through. So that's it for me. Um, that's my summary. It's been a beautiful experience. This is the inverter that I've had the longest and I have no intention of changing it. I'm keeping it and I'm going to continue using it till the warranty runs out or till SolarX introduces a product that offers me much more um, abilities than this one currently does. Than this one currently does. So this is a long video, relatively long, relatively long video even for me. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about was lightning protection. It comes standard with lightning protection. Last year, we had about four lightning strikes that hit this building, and the inverter went off. Ten seconds later, came on. Uh, the last one, I was actually in bed, and the lights went out, and I was like, ah, "Why did the lights go out?" And then I heard the, you know, thunder. Boom! The building shook, and ten seconds later, the lights came back on. So they tell you that they have lightning protection. They really do. It's not unique to them. Most of these hybrid. Uh, Hybrid inverters come with lightning protection built in. Uh, please watch a summary. You know I did some landscaping work. So I'm going to show you what the compound looks like while showing you the solar panels. So after you watch that, um, let me take this opportunity to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance. I look forward to seeing you in 2024. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for um, the comments. Thank you for someone actually sent me plans from Paraguay. I don't have it yet, but he sent me plants from Paraguay. So I look forward to planting this huge. I think they are guavas, about this size. I'm very, very excited. So I've met some wonderful people on YouTube. And I pray for every one of you that God takes you into 2024 complete. Enjoy time with your family. Merry Christmas. Once again, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos. Mm -hmm.